Here we got a two-headed turtle. How sick is that? I don't even know what to do here. They're not looking good. Hello everybody and welcome back to Aquaterra Exotic Pets. So real quick before we start the video, I just want to take a minute and thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. I think this month we have close to 100,000 followers, just this month. And uh, it's absolutely surreal, so let's check it out. There it is. But once again, thank you guys so much. Now let's get back to the video. So a couple weeks ago, we were actually on vacation and my friend texted me that he hatched a two-headed turtle. And knowing me, of course, I had to take it. So I said to him, let's wait a couple weeks, make sure they're eating, both of them are ready to be transported. Cause luckily he's only like a couple hours away. So we didn't have to worry about shipping him, which is a lot safer in that sense. But here we are two weeks later, apparently they're both eating and they're both ready to go. So let's go ahead and pick him on up. All right, guys, we're back. <laughs> I got the two-headed turtle. Let's check him out. Oh, that's awesome. Look at their dumb big eyes. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna have to be their home for the next couple of weeks. I know it's very depressing, but this is what they have to do because otherwise they will drown. Wait a minute, let me play that back. Otherwise they will drown. Just keep that in the back of your mind because you're gonna realize how ironic that was here in a minute. So I'm gonna put him in here and I'm gonna go get to bed. I guess I'll update you guys back here in the morning. Good night, guys. All right, let me walk you through what exactly is going on here. So the first thing I do when I get down there in the morning is obviously go check up on the turtle. And I notice that the turtle's sitting with all four of its limbs fully out and both of its necks completely extended. When I picked up the turtles, both the heads were completely limp until I noticed that one of the heads actually took a small breath. That's when I run off here and start doing CPR. On adult turtles, the only way to actually do CPR is by pumping the legs in hopes to get some blood moving. But on baby turtles, their shells are still soft. You could actually do compressions. And that's exactly what I did here for, well, about 15 minutes. But I still wasn't happy with the progress. So what I did was I laid both the turtles down on an angle just to drain any water that may be left in their lungs out. I sat there with them and saw absolutely no movement. But after two hours, I finally saw the left head move a little bit. And then I actually saw the right head gasp for air. For the rest of the day, I kept them on damp paper towels because at this point, they were still really off. When nighttime came along, I decided to just take the paper towels out and just put a slight bit of water just to keep them from drying out overnight. Then I went to bed. Within a minute of me walking into the animal room, I discovered another problem that we're still dealing with. And as you can see, they flip themselves over. A normal, well, single-headed red-haired slider is capable of flipping themselves back over if they do tip. Now, these guys just have a little bit too wide of a shell that they can't get themselves back over. I'm kind of tangled up right now with Chush, but uh, I'm actually happy that they flipped themselves over last night because that means that they were really active. All right, let's get you back, bud. Come on. <laughs> so yesterday I did offer bloodworms to see if they would eat, but I think they were just stressed out from transportation. So let's go ahead and try again today. Well, they still don't seem too interested. Maybe yesterday was a little too stressful for them. So uh, I guess we'll try again tonight. I offered food later in the afternoon and then once again at night and both times they didn't eat. Since the water's so low in this container, I can't really have a filtration system unless I plumb some sort of sump. But since this is temporary, that would kind of be pointless. So that means after every time I feed them and they don't eat, I have to clean the container, which isn't a big deal, but I have to do it at least three to four times a day. Before I went to bed this time, I actually positioned the security cameras down there to be able to see if they flip themselves at night. Then I went to bed. But <laughs> that didn't last too long. On day three, I finally got my hands in some black rooms, but just like yesterday, they show no interest. In the morning, I caught this. I don't know what clicked overnight, but not only did he eat in the morning, he ate in the afternoon and at night, but it was only the left head eating. I'd also like to note on day four, they didn't tip themselves once. And I also noticed they were scooting around a little bit better. And at the end of the day, I got the best news yet. I finally saw a healthy poop, meaning that their digestive system is working. So that pretty much concluded day four, but day four gave me a lot of hope. On day five, six, and seven, it was pretty much day four on loop. The only exception is that they tipped themselves a couple times. At this point, I started to get really worried that the right head or the smaller head still wasn't eating. And this brought up the question, if the left head is eating, does the right head have to eat? Well, it really depends. It's obvious that they share the same, but the question is, at what point does it connect? If it connects at the and they have two stomachs, well, then they both have to eat. If it connects early on, like at the throat, which is most likely, then it only matters that the one head is eating, but he has to make up for both of them. 
The only real way we could tell is by getting an x-ray or a CAT scan. Right now, they're just so sensitive that bringing them into the vet may set them back a couple days, which we can't afford to do right now. But on day eight, I finally saw the right head eat. Then that next day, I saw them both eating at the same time. But don't worry, every time we get good news with these guys, bad news isn't far behind. But before we get into that, just a quick word from today's video sponsor, Aquaterra. If you guys didn't catch on, we don't have a video sponsor, it's myself. Ducks are going crazy. If you guys are looking for any captive bred or responsibly sourced reptiles and amphibians of all kinds from all over the world, you can go ahead and email or text me here, or you guys can browse our Morph Market page, which will be listed below in every video. We offer flat rate domestic shipping all over the US. We also offer North New Jersey local pickup, or you can come stop by our booth at any of these expos listed below. But anyway, back to the video. In almost every two-headed animal, there's gonna be some sort of deformity. Whether it's minor or severe, it all obviously depends on the specific animal. With two-headed turtles, there's pretty much three common categories of things that usually go wrong. One would be shell growth, two would be shell curling, and three would be improper shell development. For shell growth, this guy is actually kind of above average for his age, so I'm happy with that. I split up curling and shell development because pretty much curling is inevitable in two-headed turtles. Although there's not a lot out there, I've actually never seen an adult two-headed turtle without a slight case of curling. And just to be clear, there's absolutely nothing we could do about this, so we're just gonna have to see how this progresses. And for shell development, other than the curling, this is one of the best two-headed turtles I've ever seen. Most of the two-headed turtles that are born that sadly don't make it usually have some sort of bump on their back, or they have some sort of squish back end, which could really be pressing on their organs, hence why they don't make it. But as you can see with these guys, they're, well, pretty much perfect, except for one thing. I noticed that for their age, their shell is still a little soft. Did you guys know that when baby turtles just hatch, like these guys here, their shells are still super soft? It could take one to six months for a hatching turtle shell to completely harden, but the two-headed turtle's plastron was still below average. So what is causing this? In a normal turtle, the lack of UVB and the lack of calcium could easily cause this. A soft shell could also be fixed by adding UVB and calcium as well. Semi-aquatic turtles like red-eared sliders do actually have to leave the water and bask. If they don't, they can easily contract something called shell rot. I know most of the time you see these guys, they're in the container of water, but these guys are actually going through a very strict dry docking period. And this three time a day, hour long interval of being on land has been approved by my vet. So you might be wondering, why don't I just let them do it on their own? Well, simply put, they're not capable. And until they are, I'm just gonna have to keep doing it on my own. But I do have hope for them to figure it out in the near future. So if it's not the lack of UVB, it's not the lack of calcium, and it's not shell rot, then what is it? I think it comes down to food. All of my hatchling turtles eat bloodworms, blackworms, but their main source of diet is pellets. These are specifically made to make sure that the baby turtles are getting everything that they need from their food. And on the other hand, we have the two-headed turtle, who refuses to eat anything other than blackworms. And I think the lack of a healthy, balanced diet is what's causing this delay in the hardening of the shell. A couple weeks ago, I posted a YouTube short and a TikTok video saying the most liked comment on this video will be the turtle's official name. There was over 20,000 names, but the winner is... Barf and Belch from How to Train Your Dragon, commented by Armendez427. Sir? Sir, please stop. Once again, guys, thank you so- <laughs> Once again, guys, thank you so- Sir, can you please stop? Sir. Ow. Once again, guys, thank you so much for 100k. I cannot have- done once again guys thank you so much for 100k i could not have done it without you guys but i'll see you all next time on aquaterra